Greetings, all you beautiful people of this beautiful planet. This is League Unlocked. My name is Eric Fine, a little Han Solo on today's epi as we continue our dive into the regional gauntlet run of the LCK 2023 Summer Split, which technically, because nobody can co-stream it, is already a part of Worlds 2023. So you could say the World Championship, well, it's already kicked off. It's already been kicked off for a series as KT Rolster already clinched that third seed. Now we only have the fourth seed to decide. And of course, it is a swath of defending world champions on the lineups. Today it was Deft versus Barrel, the former world champion bot lane. Obviously, DRX got a little bit lucky to even be a part of this. They weren't even part of the summer split playoffs, but we know. D plus has been one of the most inconsistent teams in the entire LCK summer. Sometimes they look like legit contenders for top three. Sometimes they barely look like a playoff team. But luckily, Showmaker woke up on the right side of the bed today. D plus, they heard, oh, what's world championship on the line? Okay, well then we'll take things a little bit seriously because they were. They were ready to go from the get-go in this series, starting with that first matchup where, okay, they gave over the Aatrox to Rascal, and it didn't really matter because, as I mentioned, Showmaker all business today. A couple of Silas games to start things off. It was the Alistair ulti. He was stealing time and time again in this first game. Deft goes untouched in most of the fights, uh, in this set, they had the Zyra Khan combo. It was Kellen who was starting the series. Obviously, we've seen both Kellen and Bible get some starts throughout the summer split, but Kellen looked pretty decent. Everybody looked on the same page in this first game, which is something we have not seen out of D+. And listen, it's, it's constantly been the mid to late game, the shot calling, communication, macro type of stuff that we have seen. D plus struggle with throughout the majority of this year. So seeing them kind of dominate the early game and the mid game, you know, that's that's nothing new. Getting a 10k gold lead here. They had the Dragon Soul. This was pretty routine business as usual. The second game in this series, there was a little bit more pushback out of DRX. Uh, an absolutely disgusting Silas game. Uh, for Showmaker in terms of the ultis, he could steal. You got Nocturne, Malphite, Azir, Leona, but it was mostly the Malphite one that he was stealing um, in this matchup. Deft is the lone damage source of Felios. You heard Wolf and Atlas both talking about it here, but he's unable to be killed here. Showmaker gonna survive with the beautiful Zanyas as the cleanup crew for DRX. Paddock. He had a rough game two and three. I mean, Showmaker, what are you supposed to do there? The Flash Malphite ulti stolen from the Silas. He had way better Malphite ultis than Rascal across this entire game. It was basically just a highlight reel of those unstoppable forces out of Showmaker. I mean, another soul goes over to D+. This one took a little bit longer, but there still didn't need to really be any huge macro decisions out of D+. It was just kind of stomping, steamrolling their way through team fight after team fight, and they looked pretty good doing it. Uh, finally, in that third game, you know, a pair of Rel games, a pair of Silas games, it was the same recipe for D+, in those first two games. Finally forced to shake things up a little bit in this third game. We get, far and away, the spiciest pick, a Zack Jungle, last pick for Canyon, which... Is a little bit risky because he picked it into Sejuani, which typically is one of the easiest champions to counter his engage with that Arctic Assault interrupt. But somehow, Canyon still found some way to have impact, found some way to get engages early in the bot lane, and often later in the game as well, even though he gets kind of caught up here and gets exploded. That's fine. It's worth it to get a couple of kills over uh, to DK. This is the biggest pushback of the entire series for DRX as they do lock up the dragon here, or the Baron, excuse me, as you saw him. Uh, you saw Croco interrupt Canyon here, but it's just the continued engage out of D+. Even though Paddock's able to get some damage over the wall, Canyon comes in for the flank, and Showmaker's TP in at the very top to pincer move in. Look how low health 
these three members are as Canyon dist or Can Us distracts them long enough. Canyon gets popped into the passive, but oh no. Here's Mr. Showmaker to flash in on the Jace and bring down the hammer. Absolutely club the DRX lineup. Deft is now here to finish the flank. Bait tries his best, but that's, that's four members of D+. Plus. So even though the Baron goes over to DRX, doesn't really matter. It's D+, Plus who ends up closing out that game. It is a 3-0 business as usual. And let's not forget, it is honestly almost pure luck that DRX is even at this point because the two wins that they got that even clinched them a spot here were against T1 in basically back-to-back -back weeks when Poby was starting over Faker and they looked absolutely abysmal. So that right there is 33% of their wins from the split. Combine that with the fact that Live Sandbox, if they could have beaten the KT Challenger team, it would have been them here because they already had 10 points from swing. So either way, no miracle run here. Barrel not going to be able to defend that world championship. Not feeling super excited about D+, plus because again, this is a not even playoff team. I'm glad they 3-0'd them because they are leaps and bounds ahead of them. You'd be a little bit concerned if they even dropped a game to DRX. But now this sets up the beautiful finale in the LCK, Hanwha Life versus D plus Kia for the final spot at the World Championship. It is the final series of the summer split in Korea until Worlds gets going because that, is, of course, is in Korea. Zeka and Kingen versus Deft, the former DRX buddies. And you remember these squads matched up to close out the regular season to decide who was going to be that fourth seed. And it was Hanwha Life coming away with the clean not clean the 2-0 at the very least this was deft trying his absolute damnedest he always seems to step up to another level when he's matching up opposite viper on the rift there was no exception to that to close out the regular season but needs some step up performances from d plus needs showmaker playing at the level that he was today humble life probably should be favorites heading into this but absolutely I don't think it's an upset going either way, whoever wins this series. I just hope, I pray, that it's a competitive series that we're actually feeling good about whichever team, competitive and at a high level, so that we're feeling good about whichever team gets through as that fourth seed and not kind of laughing like, oh boy, the LCK fourth seed looks a little bit rough. Obviously, both these squads have talent across the board where you would be, the potential is there for them to make some noise at the World Championship. All we hope is that both teams are playing at a high level as we head to Worlds 2023, but that's going to be the final series from the LCK. Can't wait to see it. The rivalries are already there, of course, with so many former teammates, but that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. You people stay beautiful, and thank you for watching, as always.